Hey everyone, it's Jeff, and today I'm reacting to some more Bleacher Report trades. You guys seem to like this type of content. And by the way, I've been looking at the um, results from the last poll, and I probably will add a face cam sometime, maybe this week, maybe by next week. I don't know how to do that yet, but it shouldn't be that hard, right? But um, anyways, like and subscribe, and we'll get into it. And I'm going to warn you, these trades are, for the most part, pretty terrible. Like, I would say... All of them, except maybe the last one, are pretty bad, okay? And so, the article is called um, Trades to Help Get NBA's Best Superstars Over the Top. It's by Grant Hughes, okay? Came out, I think, today, this morning, July 6th, right? And I'm gonna skip to the first one. It's called Dame Heads Home for Support Staff, and it's the Warriors sending James Wiseman, Andrew Wiggins, and the number seven overall pick in this year's draft, and two future top five protected first round picks for Damian Lillard. I'm gonna tell you immediately, this is just not enough for Damian Lillard, okay? Paul George went for, I think, five first round picks and either two or three first round pick swaps, okay? And I'm looking at James Harden details right now. It's four first round picks and four pick swaps, okay? The Blazers are definitely not giving up their franchise player and probably like the most important player in the franchise's history in the last, like what, 50, 40 years, right? And even Bill Walton, who, you know, the other guy I'm thinking about right now, was only there for, like, not that long before he got injured, right? So Lillard is just incredibly important to them. And they're not trading him for, for this, you know? Like, James Wiseman, depending on who you talk to, is worth either less than a first-round pick or worth up to two first-round picks, right? Andrew Wiggins is there to balance out the contracts. The number seven overall pick is cool, but it's, you know, the number seven pick. And two future top five protected picks is you know, that's not good enough. Now, if Wiseman had like this great rookie season where he, it looks like he's gonna be like the NBA's next dominant big man, then sure, this trade makes more sense. But the idea of Lillard in um, Golden State is pretty cool, right? You do have these two undersized guards, so defensively, you probably will struggle a little bit on that end just because Klay Thompson, for some reason, historically has just not played well at small forward. I have no idea why, it's just... You look at the play-by-play -play data and Clay Thompson a small forward just doesn't work for some reason. And Dame has been like accustomed to pretty much running the show for the last like decade of his career, right? So he probably isn't used to the whole Golden State, pass the ball around, you know, stuff like that. But I'm sure like, at least offensively, they'd probably figure it out. And um, you know, this trade is, the idea is cool, I guess, because anything that sends, you know, a star to another star's team is cool. But the value in this is just, kind of terrible but um moving on this next one is Bradley Beal lightens Luca's load okay and it's Porzingis Jalen Brunson Josh Green and two future unprotected first round picks for Bradley Beal and um once again this is just not enough for Bradley Beal because like I said before Paul George went for like basically seven first round picks right and this is to some people, Porzingis is like a negative asset at this point. Just because Porzingis has a, you know, super long contract that is pretty expensive, and he has a long history of just injury problems, so I can see why some people don't view him as much of an asset, although I would say his value is at least like a first-round pick still, right? But this is still just, that's like three first-round picks max when you look at this deal for Bradley Beal. I think Josh Green is also a first-round pick, and I'm sure he has potential, but the problem is he has like very little value right now, right? Because even if he was a first round pick, um, you know, last year, he hasn't really proved his first round pick value in terms of potential yet in the NBA. So even if the Wizards do like him, the Mavs have no like leverage in this situation with Josh Green, right? They can't say he's worth a first round pick just because we took him with the first rounder because he hasn't proved that he is a first round pick in the NBA yet, if that makes sense. So yeah, anyways, like this is just not a good deal for Bradley Beal. Like, if I was the Sixers, I would throw way more for Bradley Beal than what this is. And I don't care if Bradley Beal is a free agent next year because it's Bradley Beal. So yeah, um, cool idea because I think Beal would help Luka a lot, even if, you know, it's probably not enough to actually win the West. And the Mavs still need to add more just overall talent. But as for like the Wizards, I guess getting Porzingis would be cool, although I would rather just have like Ben Simmons plus... Tyrese Maxey plus like four first rounders, right? 
and um, probably more than that actually, probably closer to like five first rounders. So yeah, like thumbs down. I don't like it. Moving on though, and this video will be quicker than the last one just because the majority of these trades are kind of bad, is Embiid gets an upgrade. And once again, I don't know why Bleacher Report thinks that Ben Simmons, sorry, Damian Lillard's trade value is so low, right? Like if the Blazers are gonna trade Damian Lillard, it's gonna be for like a very similar package to the Paul George deal at least, right? Or like the Anthony Davis deal where it's like four unprotected picks plus like two to three pick swaps because this is a top 10 NBA player who is really freaking good, right? And so it's the Sixers sending Ben Simmons, Matisse Thybulle, Tyrese Maxey, and two future first round picks to the Blazers for Damian Lillard. And once again, like, I guess this has like the makings of a solid trade because you do have Ben Simmons and Tyrese Maxey. But it's going to take way more than just two first round picks, right? I'm pretty sure the Sixers have like a ton of unprotected picks, right? So you would need at least two more pick swaps for this trade to even be enticing for the Blazers because if I was Portland, I would rather have Damian Lillard than Ben Simmons and, you know, Tyrese Maxey plus two future late first round picks, right? That just does not seem to be a very good deal for me. And of course, if Lillard wants to actually be traded, then you need to find something for him, obviously, but I'm pretty sure they can get something better than this because it's just not good value for Damian Lillard, right? This is a top 10 player who's probably the second best point guard in the NBA right now, at least in my opinion. If you don't count Luka as a point guard, which I really don't, I kind of put Luka in his like own category of, you know, six, eight guys who just don't fit into any positional norms. But um, yeah, another thumbs down for me. This next trade is um, another Sixers Blazers thing and it's McCollum for Ben Simmons. So this is our third Blazers trade in this video. Um, this is the only one that actually is kind of close to like accurate value. And it does make sense, right? Because the Sixers need an outside scorer who can really compliment Joel Embiid. It was Seth Curry this year, but Seth Curry just isn't good enough to do it by himself because Tobias Harris was kind of disappearing again for like the third straight year in the playoffs. And of course, Portland is getting Ben Simmons who would help their defense. And they're probably hoping that Norman Powell can step up and fill the role that CJ McCollum played. And look, this trade, it does like make sense from like that perspective, but I touched on this on my last Ben Simmons video, but I feel like the Blazers and the Sixers are both, they're kind of just trading off something, right? They're trading away part of their strength and helping part of the weaknesses, but in that case, you're not really improving your team that much. You're just kind of making a trade-off, right? And for example, like the Blazers, you know, Ben Simmons is a fantastic defender, of course, right? And offensively, he still has room to grow, though. It depends on how optimistic or pessimistic you are of Ben Simmons' offensive game. But you are losing McCollum, who a lot of games, especially, you know, those crucial late season games when Portland's making a playoff push, McCollum has been huge, right? He's made these huge shots that really prove his offensive value. And he's been a long-term fixture of this team, right? He's like a part of this team's identity. And in my opinion, if you're going to trade McCollum, right, it has to be McCollum plus like a bunch of picks for someone even better than McCollum that we know for sure is, you know, better than McCollum, right? Like an actual other star. And the problem is, well, for starters, the Blazers for some reason are okay with trading like two first round picks for Robert freaking Covington, but aren't willing to throw the bag at like Paul George or something. But that's, um, I guess, unrelated. I'm just hating on the Blazers front office because I hate how conservative they are. But um, even if Simmons does like make Portland better, I guess, it's just not better enough. Like, can you really envision a team with like Damian Lillard and um, Ben Simmons plus like Norman Powell, Robert Covington, and Yusuf Nurkic making the Western Conference Finals right now or like even getting past like the first round? I just don't think that team has the offensive firepower to do so. Unless Norman Powell becomes like this 25 points a game scorer, which he could. I wouldn't bet on it, but like he could, right? As for the Sixers, similar story for me in terms of you are getting back someone that fills your need of like perimeter shot making, but you're also losing like one of the best defenders in the league, right? The, one of the reasons why the Sixers are so good is because it's pretty freaking hard to score against them when Ben Simmons is there. And I know that Trey Young um, kind of embarrassed Ben Simmons' playoff series, although I wouldn't really say he embarrassed him, it's just more like Trey Young was really good. Like, I don't think Luka embarrassed Kawhi and Paul George. Luka is just really freaking good. But even so, like, Ben Simmons is a fantastic defender who 
could very well win like multiple Defensive Player of the Year awards. And while you are getting back McCollum, like I said, the Sixers should be looking to trade up in firepower, right? They should be looking to package Ben Simmons plus other assets for a star like Bradley Beal or Damian Lillard like from before. And I don't think McCollum is good enough to be like your primary perimeter shot maker, right? Because he is a very skilled player who can hit a variety of really creative, tough shots off the dribble, but McCollum does struggle to be an elite scorer because his slashing game just isn't there. He's not a very physically gifted guard, so finishing over those like big physical defenders right at the basket is hard for him. So he settles for like those floaters a lot, right? And they do work, but you're not going to consistently be this elite slashing threat if you can't take the ball all the way to the basket consistently, right? That's why McCollum's always been stuck at like 22 points per game instead of 25 or 26. And so I think you're just giving up too much defense and you're not getting back enough offense for this deal to make sense for the Sixers either, in my opinion. So while I do think the value is there and I could see both sides making a deal like this, I just don't think it makes enough sense for either side. Although this trade isn't a terrible one. It's probably the only one out of these four that's even close to value. But um, yeah, there's my thoughts on Bleacher Report's newest trade article. I think they made one like a few days ago too, which had like all 30 teams, which to be honest, I just was not looking forward to actually doing because a lot of those trades are like filler trades that are kind of boring that are like Solomon Hill for a second round pick and that's just not interesting to look at for me. But um, yeah, that's the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed and I'll see you for the next one.